Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about dimensioning for change. So when you design parts in SOLIDWORKS, there's obviously a million ways you could dimension your parts. But when you start designing more, you're going to realize there are certain ways you want to reference your sketches or certain features in your sketches you want to reference it by so that uh, when you do change your design later on, it'll change accordingly. So We'll go ahead and talk about some examples here. So let's say we have, I'm just going to create a plate with a hole in it or some holes. So let's say we have a quarter inch plate. And then let's actually go ahead and dimension our plate here. So uh, let's make this five by five. Okay, so we have a five by five. Uh, plates here. So let's suppose we wanted to add some holes. So we're going to just use some metric, maybe some clearance holes. Actually, I'm feeling like inches. Let's do like a number six hole. Let's see. Okay, so like for example, let's say we know we wanted to make um, like, let's say we want to make four holes, right? Do you think this is the best way to make the four holes? So right now you can see that, you know, one, one way of dimensioning this could be, you know, what if you just made each one like 0 0.5, 0 0.5 away, right? So notice if I do this, if I repeat that for all four, that would take a lot of time, right? So another way you could do it is, you know, let's say we put it in a square. So we could draw a square. And instead, we could lock it to the corner. That way, if we did reference it to one side, we only need to do it once. Okay, so this is another way you could put it in a square. Um, because the square is not used, we want to use a reference. So notice right now that, um, let's say, for example, we know that this will be four uh, inches away. Okay. Let's say this is a four by four. And suppose, you know, you decide to come in and say this is going to be like half inch away. Right. So what, what do you notice is wrong or not good about this? So we're dimensioning this top corner to be um, 0.5 and 0.5 away. So if we ever decide to change this part, notice that this whole thing will be referenced to that corner. So what do I mean? If I, if I come here and change this, right? If I one day decide to make this 7, right? You'll notice my holes get shifted. So unless you initially wanted your holes to have this specific pattern, you would dimension like that. But let's say you always wanted the holes to be 0.5 from the corners, then you would actually dimension this differently. So if you go into your sketch here, um, if your intention is that each point is 0.5 away, then what you would want to do instead is you don't want to fix this dimension, but rather maybe have the center of this square inside. So one way to do that is you could create like a center line, and then maybe add a midpoint in here. And then this midpoint will be coincident with this. So now, or actually it doesn't like a point because whole wizard we'll see that point and make a hole there. So I'm going to actually delete that point and then make it a midpoint. So you could make a midpoint relation without a point. So there you go. So now if I come back here and, you know, if I decide to change my plate size, you'll notice that the holes will follow accordingly, right? So there's really two ways or two common ways that someone might make hole patterns. They may make a pattern such that it's fixed, or they make 
make a whole pattern that's like dynamic to the plate size, right? So um, depending on the application, you would dimension it the correct way. Okay, so you want to think about how your design could change later on, and based on how that change might happen, you want to dimension it based on the feature that um, you know that won't or will change. Okay, so another example too is, you know, let's say, let's say right now we have a thick plate, okay, and let's say we always want a hole. Let's say we want to cut a hole here. So we're going to go ahead and do extrude cut right in the center. And let's say this hole is three inches. Let's say we make some cut, OK? And let's say the cut is like three inches. So notice here, if we measure it, if we measure this, right? Um, Let's go ahead and convert this to inches. You could see here, this is inches. So we have two inches, right? Because it's a five inch block and we did a three inch cut. So let's say we want there to be one, one um, inches of space here. So if we edit this and do four, right? Then if we measure this to the bottom, we're going to have one inch. So now let's say we always want to maintain that distance. Actually, let me change this design a little bit so we can see the cutout. So I'm going to go ahead and make this cut like so. And I'm going to make this, let's say, 0.5. So the build crash, so I edit, select my contour, come in and choose this. Okay, so notice we have a cut like this, right? So we have a cut and let's suppose that we always want the distance from here to here to be one inch away. Okay, so how can we dimension this such that if we modify the thickness of the block, you know, let's say we change it to three, Notice how now it's cut all the way through, right? But let's say we always want there to be one inch of material. How can we do that? So the way you would dimension this correctly is, you know, let's say we added a, a plane here. And let's say we made that plane one inch. And we want to flip the offset to here. One way you can do this is if I move the plane above here or move the cut down. If I edit my feature, I could say you could dimension it up to a surface, right? That's one way you can dimension the extrude cut. So now if I come to my extrude boss and let's say I wanted to make this uh, smaller, like three inches, notice that there's still one inch of space here, right? If I, if I come here and measure it, you see that this is one inch. So that's exactly what we were shooting for, right? So the main idea is if you're trying to design something for change and you know certain parameters you want to maintain, then you should dimension it such that when you do change a parameter that your design will hold the dimension that you want. So as a recap, in the first example, we talked about how to dimension these four circles if we wanted to change dynamically with the size of our square. And then the second example we talked about was, let's say we wanted a constant thickness of one inch of material left, uh, regardless of the thickness of the square, then you would want to set up a plane and dimension it, do the extrude cut up to the plane. That way, when it does change, because the plane is dimensioned relative to the bottom, and it's one inch, then it'll always be one inch. Okay, so as you design, just always keep in mind how you're going to change your part. And then when you dimension, you want to dimension it accordingly. So there's no hard and fast rule. It's just you got to have, you know, design more, have more experience, and then you'll see what's the best way to design without all your dimensions breaking.
Okay, so if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.